Well, tech stocks went on a wild ride yesterday. The Nasdaq and the ARK Innovation Fund moving in lockstep. They both got dragged down pretty sharply yesterday morning, but then they rebounded after those early steep losses. Joining us right now to talk about the tech drivers is Surat Sethi. He's managing partner and portfolio manager at DCLA. Of course, he's also a CNBC contributor. And Surat, what happened yesterday? Is there any rational explanation for it? I don't really think so, Becky. At this point, um, investors are really focused on the next couple of quarters. And as you've talked about, inflation is front and center. Earnings we've just finished. And really, it's going to be what's going to drive the economy going forward. And I think right now we've got this kind of confusion. Is it just going to be tech that you know took us here from the last year and a half? Or does value come back? Does the real economy stocks come back? Our view is you have to be diversified, play in both areas. And I think if you're not diversified, you're going to have much more volatility in your portfolio, especially as we saw intraday yesterday and we've seen really since the beginning of this year. Yeah, it's crazy to watch this kind of play out. Uh, inflation, obviously, if it's a problem, it's a problem, especially for those uh, big tech stocks, um, because they've got a lot of cash that's sitting around. And if there's inflation out there, you're going to want to go back to the industrials, the materials. Those will be the stocks that really perform. But what was weird, Surat, is, is watching that play out and then watching nothing happen when it came to, to treasuries. Like the bond market, we always think of as being the smarter market. But I, I'm trying to figure out, does the bond market know something the stock market doesn't? Or is this just a case of the Fed being so um, all invasive when it comes to the bond market that you're not going to get a true read or signal out of the bond market this time around? I think it's the latter, Becky. The, the Fed has made it very clear that they're not going to let rates rise right now. And they're playing on the front end of the curve, and then they're playing with the 10-year as well. So right now, the interest rate market is really managed by the Fed. And no matter what we're seeing, whether it's copper prices go up, lumber prices go up, oil prices go up, and now today you're going to get the CPI numbers, the, the Fed has been pretty consistent that this is transitory, that they're going to let it run hot. And in the meantime, stocks are reflecting it. And yes, you're absolutely right. The bond market is normally the smarter of it. But when you have an artificial ceiling on the bond market in terms of yields, you know, this is going to be a question of uh, crying uncle. And, and to your point earlier about the dollar, the dollar is getting weaker. And that's also going to have an effect on the stock market. Now, that's going to have industrials, and, and even some growth tech that has global earnings do well. So it's, it's a combination of factors here. And when we go back to tech, we like the ones that have cash flow right now and that are growing. They're the ones that are going to be less affected by any potential interest rate movement that could come down in the next couple of quarters. It's the highly speculative, it's the growth stocks whose cash flows are being discounted in the future that are much greater than now. So you can definitely play in tech, and, and we like tech. There's a lot of value quote in tech as well. But I think you have to be very careful because once we get this ceiling off, and that could happen when the Fed says, hey, the economy is great, inflation is running better than we expected, and now we're going to pull back. And that's when you're going to see yields move because you're also seeing yields artificially lower for, for investment-grade bonds. You're not really getting a true market as to what bonds should be trading at. When I hear you say something like that, it makes me sound like you are halfway out the door with some of these big tech stock, uh, big, talk, big tech names. Is that the case, or am, am I reading too much into no, what you just said? For the, I, I like the big techs. I like the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, and then you can also play in, you know, PayPal and GoDaddy. Uh, those are good, growthy companies that have cash flow increasing over the next few quarters. Where I'm a little more skeptical is some of the cloud stocks that are trading at price to sales over 10 times earnings, some of the SPACs, the NFTs, those really, their value, their terminal value is created years down the road. That's, and, and that's where the ARC funds play also. A lot of them, they're, they're, they're very good companies, but if you're going to an area where inflation is going to matter and rates are going to matter down the road, again, that, that will affect the whole market with multiples, but you want to be companies that grow. So you've got to be very careful. It's not like we were about a year ago where interest rates in you know, the 10 years at 0.5. So it's a combination of having that in your portfolio, but then also looking at the other companies that could benefit. And even if rates don't go up, you want to benefit with industrials and financials because their earnings are going to grow and capital will flow to where earnings are going to go, not just in one area where we didn't have any earnings growth for the last four quarters looking back.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.